The top stories tonight in Y News. National Capital Region mayors ensure aid to beneficiaries despite receiving deficient social amelioration program fund. The Philippine National Police has repaired should the government decide to extend the enhanced community quarantine period in Metro Manila. The Department of Health has clarified that there is no corruption in the deficiencies flagged by the Commission on Audit in the agency's use of billions of COVID-19 funds. The Philippine government is now asking the Hong Kong government to consider the International Vaccination Certificate being issued by the Bureau of Quarantine in place of its required recognized vaccination record. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo resigns amid sexual harassment allegation. 150 155 people in Guinea are placed under quarantine due to a case of Marburg virus infection. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Kazan City. Today is Wednesday, August 11, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, some local government units in the National Capital Region received less than the requested amount from the Social Amelioration Program. But the Metro Manila mayors ensure that financial aid will be provided to beneficiaries. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why, live. Yes, Asher. I mean, some concerned Metro Manila mayors confirmed that supplemental fund will be released to give them the deficit of what they originally requested from the national government. This, as the local government units start to distribute today the financial aid from the social amelioration program to residents primarily affected by the implementation of enhanced community quarantine in the national capital region. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte explains that they received the fund with 109 million pesos short against the original approved amount. She also confirms that the cities of Taguig, Manila, and Mac Cady also received less than what was approved. Paranaque City Mayor Edwin Olivares also confirms that they will be receiving the deficit as assured by Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rolando Bautista. Inapproba na yung supplemental budget para doon sa additional na kapupunan ng 604 million at ibibigay na rin at ina-download na rin po sa atin yung 48 million para wala pong may iwanan yung 604,000 beneficiary makakatanggap po ng tulong po sa ating pong pamalan. Meanwhile, San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora asks residents who are not included in the list of beneficiaries to submit an appeal to receive the aid in the distribution sites. Pwede sila magpalista dito sa grievance committee natin at pagkatapos ng lahat ng distribution, kung may matira pang pondo, ay aaralin natin at titingnan siyempre kung sila ba'y kwalipikado. If they are qualified, then we can give them also the ECQ ayuda depending on the amount that will be left. The Metro Manila mayors vow to give their best in providing the financial aid to beneficiaries with the 15-day deadline set by the national government, which starts also today. Carleen. Thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. Meanwhile, Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso has promised to look for additional funds for mostly ECQ-affected residents in the city. Dante Amento tells us why live. Yes, Dante. Arlinda Manila LGU has received the second highest amount of over 1.488 billion pesos budget from the national government for ECQ cash assistance. Arlinda, 
but the amount is allegedly still inadequate of over 34.6 million pesos for the 8,662 families. Thus, Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso promised to look for a budget for, to fill in the deficit. Huwag kayong mag-alala. No? Uh, kung ano man ang uh, kakulangan, gagawa natin ang paraan. Pero ang importante, may bigay kagad natin ang ayuda sa taong bayan dahil mahirap ang buhay. Meanwhile, Manila Department of Social Welfare Director Maria Asuncion Fogoso says they need additional time to fast track the distribution effort. MDSW personnel may continue to give the 4,000 pesos cash aid each family beyond their working hours. But the MDSW clarifies even through this, still they cannot finish the distribution within two weeks as mandated by the national government. It will allegedly take them up to one month. Thus, they ask another weeks of extension. Mm -mm. Uh, tuwing may ayuda, binibigyan lang kami ng dalawang linggo. Pero sa isang malaking city tulad ng City of Manila, imposible matapos in two weeks' time. Uh, yung huli, parang four to five weeks yun eh. So, tignan natin kung matatapos natin ng three to four weeks. Aside from quarantine restrictions, a huge number of more than or more than 380,000 residents need to be given safe and health protocols are also strictly implemented by the local police. Ah, uh, kasi meron tayong mga recent uh, na nangyari na biglang dinadagsa ng tao at uh, kailangan maghanda kami doon sa ganong klaseng sitwasyon. Meanwhile, Har Harleen residents are advised to bring valid ID with Manila address and certification from Barangay as proof of beneficiary. And that's the latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. Meanwhile, Philippine National Police Chief General Guillermo Eliazar made rounds this morning in various Ayuda centers in Metro Manila. This is to ensure that the cash assistance distribution were organized and would not become super spreader events. The PNP chief also reminded local government units to strictly implement the minimum public health standards. Patuloy ang gagawin nating monitoring at kasama sa plano ang pagkakaroon ng standby forces upang maiwasan na maging isang super spreader event ito. Nakikisap din tayo sa ating mga kabayan na sumunod sa mga patakaran ng kanikanilang LGUs dahil lahat naman ng mga nasa listahan ay sigurado makakatanggap ng ayuda mula sa ating pamalaan, bakunado man o hindi. The Philippine National Police is prepared should the government decide to extend the enhanced community quarantine in Metro Manila. Lea Ilagan reports. The Philippine National Police will continue to implement the guidelines for enhanced community quarantine in case the government extends it after August 20. PNP Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar says they will just wait for the decision of the Metro Mayors and the Interagency Task Force on this matter. Kami naman sa PNP ay nagkapatupad lamang po ng mga desisyong ito bilang kabahagi ng pamalaan na ang mithiin lamang ay hindi na lumala pa ang pandemya sa ating bansa sa pamagitan na pagpatupad ng mga patakarang mismong ang mga health experts ang nagsasabing epektibo upang protektahan ang ating makubayan. General Eliazar also reminded police commanders to also look after the welfare and safety of police personnel, especially if the ECQ is extended. Metro Manila has been placed under ECQ from August 6 to 20, 2021 to curb the spread of the more infectious COVID-19 Delta variant. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases has suspended the shortened quarantine period for fully vaccinated COVID-19 close contacts. Rosalie Kos will tell us why. To stop further COVID-19 surge in the country due to the more transmissible Delta variant, 
The government's pandemic task force has suspended the seven-day quarantine period for fully vaccinated individuals who came in close contact with probable and confirmed COVID-19 cases. As part of proactive measures and restrictions, they will have to undergo 14-day quarantine period whether fully vaccinated or unvaccinated. At tayo po ay bumalik muna sa existing protocol. Whether you are vaccinated or fully vaccinated, kapag kayo ay considered close contact, kailangan nyo pong tapusin ang labing apat na araw na pagka-quarantine at kung kayo ay magkakasimptomas, itetest po kayo uli at kapag kayo ay nagpositibo, ia-isolate po kayo. So, Close contacts are persons who have face-to-face -face or direct physical contact with probable and confirmed COVID-19 cases two days before and 14 days after the onset of symptoms. If the close contact will remain asymptomatic for at least 14 days from the date of exposure, he or she can discontinue the quarantine. But if the individual develops symptoms or tests positive for coronavirus, the person has to isolate and shall be admitted and treated in an appropriate facility. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Households buying oxygen cylinders are warned that improper storage of oxygen tanks could do more danger at home. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Amid the rising cases of COVID-19 in the country, the demand for oxygen cylinder tanks has also increased, not only for hospitals but also for households. Although the government assures that there is enough oxygen supply in the Philippines, the Department of Health does not recommend buying oxygen tanks just to store them at home. Ang pinaka pinapaalala natin sa ating mga kababayan, flammable po ang oxygen. So konting trigger lang po diyan at bukas yan maaring magkaroon ng sakuna sa inyong pamamahay. So please avoid buying oxygen right now if it is really not needed. At a medical store in Manila City, several buyers lined up to purchase an oxygen tank for their families. Para po sa nanay ko, uh, actually meron kasi siyang heart condition right now. So after niyang uh, mag-check up yesterday, so in-advise siya na mag, uh, magkaroon na ng oxygen siya. However, according to a medical supply store owner, the demand during the first lockdown was much higher compared with the demand today. Sa oxygen tank po sa ngayon, hindi naman po siya ganong kalakas na, hindi katulad nung nakaraan na lockdown talaga na talagang ubusan. The Department of Health reminds that a prescription from a medical practitioner is necessary to be able to acquire an oxygen tank. Kailangan po nating pag-ingatan ang paggamit ng oxygen. We call it medical grade oxygen. And these are prescribed commodities dahil po uh, ito po ay kailangan guided kayo ng inyong doktor para gamitin niyo ang oxygen. The public is also advised to immediately contact their medical provider if they experience symptoms of COVID-19. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. 24-7 live streaming on YouTube. Please click the subscribe button you see on your screens and ring the bell for notifications. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Department of Health or DOH has clarified that there is no corruption in the deficiencies flagged by the Commission on Audit in the agency's use of billions of COVID-19 funds. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. Up to 67.3 billion pesos worth of COVID-19 funds were riddled with various deficiencies in the Department of Health, according to the Commission on Audit. Based on its 2020 annual audit report that was released today, the deficiencies, ranging from unused funds to incomplete documents, contributed to the challenges encountered and missed opportunities by the DOH in the country's pandemic response. The state auditor noted that it casted doubts on the regularity of transactions. These include the 11.8 million pesos of unobligated allotments aimed at strengthening the department's capacity to address the pandemic and improving the healthcare system. There were also deficiencies in purchases and lack of documentation in various contracts amounting to 5 billion pesos that were not compliant with procurement laws, rules, and regulations. According to COA, this deprived the government with the most advantageous prices, resulted in doubtful payment and delays in project completion. 
COVID-19 programs worth 42 billion pesos were also transferred to partner agencies without the required memorandum of agreements and supporting documents. Claims for financial aid of health workers amounting to over 4.8 million pesos were also not paid as of December 2020 due to delayed downloading of cash allocations. COA also noted the lapses in managing the interim reimbursement mechanism or IRM funds of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. The COA has sent its recommendation to Health Secretary Francisco Duca III and directed to submit the actions taken. In a statement, Secretary Duque assures that there is no corruption involved in the use of COVID-19 funds and that the 67.3 billion pesos are all accounted for. According to Duque, the agency is currently addressing the said deficiencies. The agency noted that almost 69 billion pesos were utilized as of December 2020 for the COVID-19 response of the government. He adds they were also able to utilize the funds with the extension of the availability of funds under the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act of Bayanihan 2 up to June 30, 2021. The health secretary maintains that the agency has always been transparent and that they take the auditor's findings very seriously. But for Senator Francis Pangilinan, the audit report confirms what the Senate has been saying all along, noting that the incompetence and corruption in the COVID-19 response has led to the country to become the worst performer in the region. Jorinin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the investigation against the Okta Research Group will proceed once the enhanced community quarantine in the National Capital Region is lifted. Lawmakers assured the probe was not meant to discredit the Okta Group. Nel Maribuho reports. House Deputy Speaker and Bagong Generation Party List Representative Congresswoman Bernadette Herrera and Quezon City 4th District Representative Bong Suntai clarified today that the impending House probe on analytics group Okta Research will push through. This is despite the two lawmakers' openness to make Okta Research team a legitimate government agency. Representative Suntai and Herrera want to know the methodology that Okta Research uses to compare it with what is being used by the Department of Health. Ang laging sinasabi ng mga media sa amin, kaya namin favorite si Okta kasi they, they give the accurate data or they give the real data. So syempre kailangan mo ipatawag sa DOH o bakit nagdududa sa inyo yung mga tao na ang mas tamang data is si Okta. Ang sinasabi natin, there are sometimes inconsistencies between pronouncement being made by the DOH and uh, by Okta. And then we also want to know, uh, yun nga, pagka sinabi nilang surge, ano bang ibig sabihin ng surge? Congresswoman Herrera said that Okta is accountable for the statements and projections it issues, adding that the group should explain the details of its analytics, especially since such information affects the country's economy. The said lawmakers will invite health officials as well as health experts to the congressional hearing, which is scheduled to take place once the enhanced community quarantine in Metro Manila is lifted. On the other hand, the two lawmakers commit to support Okta Research if the group can prove that its data is better than the government's data. After the mm-hmm. hearing, and uh, we can prove that, uh, and, uh, that, that they have better data and that they are more accurate, why not? Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine government is now asking the Hong Kong government to consider the international vaccination certificate being issued by the Bureau of Quarantine in place of its required recognized vaccination record. Ray Palayo has the details. The Department of Foreign Affairs are already in talks with its Hong Kong counterparts to discuss the validity of the Philippine vaccination cards. DFA Spokesperson Assistant Secretary Ed Menyes said they are currently discussing on how to resolve the issue. Yesterday, Foreign Affairs Secretary Chodoro Luxin Jr. announced that the vaccination cards issued by the government to overseas Filipino workers will not be honored in Hong Kong. But the top Philippine diplomat is confident that the Department of Information and Communications Technology will get the job done right regarding the issuance of vaccination certificates to OFWs. The Hong Kong government has already lifted the travel ban to the Philippines last August 9, and this would pave the way for around 3,000 overseas Filipino workers to fly back to the former British colony. Wala naman silang pinaprepare na brand 
ang kailangan lang nila kasi yung documents from the Philippines na verifiable. Uh, pero based on IT, IATF resolution, mag, uh, meron yatang agency. There are around 220,000 OFW in Hong Kong and most of them are household service workers. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Vaccine doses, supplies. Vaccine doses, supplies in two metro Manila, Manila cities are running low. However, a local official assured that they will receive a replenishment from the national government before they will totally run out. JP Nunez reports. The Manila City government has suspended its overnight vaccination drive. Starting today, vaccination in the capital will be carried only from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. A total of 1,800 vaccine doses will be allocated to each of the six districts in Manila. No walk-in, no night vaccination due to supply shortage. Ibig sabihin, mga kababayan, yung 118,000 na naipadala sa atin, naubos lamang natin ng tatlong araw lang ngayon, ano? pangatlong araw. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, in Quezon City, the vaccine supply may last for two days. However, according to Mayor Joy Belmonte, they expect to receive new vaccine supplies from the national government in the coming days. On the other hand, the LGUs of San Juan, Valenzuela, and Paranaque City have a stable supply of vaccines. So far, tuloy-tuloy naman, no? At uh, makikita niya simultaneous, tuloy-tuloy din yung ating mga vaccination center. Na, no? Kaya lang ngayon, hindi na talaga kami nagpapawalk-in. They have to register para to avoid yung mga unnecessary movement ng tao. Meanwhile, 100,000 doses of the Chinese-made Sinopharm coronavirus vaccine donated by the United Arab Emirates has arrived in the country. The shots, which are known as Hyatt vaccine, the UAE, will be deployed to areas experiencing a surge in COVID-19 cases. The 100,000 doses of the vaccine is really a great number, no? malaking, uh, malaking number of this. And uh, in the program of our uh, Kalihim uh, Secretary Carlito Galvez, ay, uh, ito ay, ay ipupokus natin doon sa mga areas na merong surge. And again, ang numero na ito ay makakatulong sa mga lugar na nangangailangan ng, ng uh, bakuna, lalo na ngayon sa panahon na ito, uh, with the Delta variant that we have here in the Philippines. The Food and Drug Administration today has approved the Department of Health's application for an emergency use authorization for this batch of Sinopharm jobs from the UAE. The Sinopharm shots will be used for the inoculation of individuals aged 18 years old and above. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines listed today 12,021 new COVID-19 cases, pushing the nationwide tally to 1,688,040. In its latest bulletin, the Department of Health said the country's number of active infections climbed to 81,399. Of these cases, 94.8% are mild, 1.5% are asymptomatic, 1.15% are moderate, 1.6% are severe, and 1% are in critical condition. Meanwhile, total recoveries rose to 1,577,267 after 9,591 more patients recovered from the viral respiratory disease. COVID-related deaths increased to 29,374 with 154 new fatalities. The DOH noted in its report that three accredited testing laboratories have failed to submit data on time. Meanwhile, the overall global caseload of COVID-19 has reached 204,099,013, while the deaths have surged to 4,315,873.
three, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. remains the worst hit country with the highest number of cases and deaths at 36,055,274 and 618,137 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows with 32,036,511 confirmed cases and 429,179 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 564,773 fatalities and 20,212,642 cases. The other countries with more than 6 million confirmed coronavirus cases are Russia, France and the United Kingdom. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The number of children infected by COVID-19 and getting hospitalized is rising. In Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu, a home care facility for children was put under lockdown because of the infection. Because of these, the health department is encouraging parents and elders to get inoculated. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. COVID-19 Delta variants spare no one. As proof, the Philippines is seeing a rise in infection in children this month. This August, the Philippine General Hospital has recorded six children who got infected with COVID-19. Eight pediatric patients were also admitted at Tala Hospital in Caloocan. And in Lapu-Lapu City, Mayor Junard Chang confirms 31 children in a home care facility tested positive for COVID-19. According to the official, the facility is now under lockdown to contain the possible spread of the infection. Actually, uh, ngayon, no, they're in the lockdown. No? Uh, yung, yung mga bata na yan, hindi pwede makalabas yan, nasa, nasa loob lang ng home care. No? Yung food nila that we will provide, no, masiguro natin na uh, uh, walang infection. Kaya nga na, dapat na naka ano sila naka naka mask sila no naka mask naka uh, in fact right now uh, ang ginagawa natin merong mga paghahatid ng pagkain naka PPE yung mga mga tao na, na naghahatid sa pagkain so yun uh, ina-advise natin yung mga bata na dapat magma-mask din sila maski nasa loob sila and then there will be a, a proper hand washing they discovered the infection in the facility after a 17-year-old girl who was supposed to go home to Iloilo underwent a swabbing and tested positive. Aside from the children, a member of the staff also tested positive for COVID-19. Amongst them, only four are experiencing symptoms. Meanwhile, the health department is encouraging the parents and elderly in every household to get inoculated as added protection for children against the more transmissible COVID-19 Delta variant. Filipino children cannot be inoculated yet because of the shortage in vaccine supply. If we can be able to vaccinate uh, most of our adult population, we also give them indirectly protection, yung mga bata. Kasi yung mga bata naman, they are surrounded by adults in their household. So kung mababakunahan lahat ng nasa household, we have that cocoon effect kung saan napoprotektahan na rin po ang ating mga kabataan. The DOH also warns the public that anyone experiencing symptoms should immediately isolate themselves and get tested. Even allergic reactions should be assumed as symptoms of Delta variant. We really cannot really differentiate at this point kung ano ang Delta at hindi Delta na variant no? o kaya mga symptoms. Uh, marami pong nakakapagsabi, anecdotal, wala na ng mga loss of taste, loss of smell. But remember, even with the other variants, hindi naman po lahat na nagkaka-COVID-19 ay may loss of taste and loss of, loss of smell, di ba? Experts continuously remind the public that the threat of COVID-19 Delta variant is no joke. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A health expert stressed that getting a flu vaccine is as important as getting a COVID-19 shot amid the pandemic. Marvin Callas tells us why. Catching a flu is a trend during the rainy season. But because its symptoms are almost the same with those of COVID-19, many are confused. That is why, aside from getting vaccinated against COVID-19, it is also important to get a flu vaccine. Dr. Ronald Ray Hoswick 
A vaccine medical director of the GlaxoSmithKline explains that flu vaccines provides protection in preventing complications that could result in death if a condition gets worse. Ang recommendation po ay dapat annually tayo nagpapabakuna. Ang kadahilanan po nito ay uh, ang, ang bakuna po na nakukuha natin mula sa flu ay nag-wing po yung immunity niya no? uh, sa isang taon. Bukod pa po doon, meron pong tinatawag na nagsisirculate na virus no? na na-identify taon-taon. So mahalaga po na mayroong match doon sa naibakuna sa atin laban doon sa nagsisirculate na flu virus sa taong iyon. Dr. Hosway added that getting a flu vaccine could also help prevent twindemic. Tatandaan po natin na magkaibang virus po yung COVID at saka yung flu. At, uh, at ang sa aspeto po ng public health, ang ayaw po nating mangyari ay magkaroon din po ng tinatawag na flu outbreak. No? Ang mga eksperto, tinatawag po ito na twindemic. Ibig sabihin, Apart from having a COVID pandemic, may potential na magkaroon tayo ng flu outbreak. Experts advise that a simple flu should not be neglected for it could result in complications. Marvin Callas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced his resignation Tuesday amid sexual harassment allegations. Cuomo had disputed the findings of the state's investigation. Judith Anufuente tells us why. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced Tuesday that he is resigning after multiple accusations of sexual harassment against women. According to Cuomo, fighting back against the allegations and defending his position would subject the state of New York to too much turmoil and distraction as it continues to face the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think that given the circumstances, the best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. And therefore, that's what I'll do. Because I work for you. And doing the right thing is doing the right thing for you. Cuomo's resignation will take effect in two weeks. This is seen as a dramatic fall from grace for the once celebrated governor. He rose to national acclaim over the past year due to his detailed daily briefings and leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic and was also often mentioned as a potential presidential candidate. But as accusations of sexual misconduct surfaced against Cuomo, his supporters quickly turned against him. Even the entire Democratic establishment, including President Joe Biden, called on him to resign. Cuomo will be replaced by Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, who will be the first woman to hold that position in New York. He may still face criminal charges, as investigations are still ongoing, and at least one of the accusers has filed a criminal complaint. He insists the pressure for his removal is politically motivated. Judith Anufuente, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In the midst of battling third wave of COVID-19 infection, a country in West Africa placed more than 150 people in isolation after confirming a case of another virus disease. Mark Vidalfin will tell us why, live. Yes, Marvi, please go ahead. Real health authorities in Guinea, west of Africa, are monitoring the close contacts of a confirmed case of Marburg disease. This is a hemorrhagic fever similar to Ebola due to its high transmission and fatality ratio of up to 88%. The current case was detected in Gwekidu in southern Guinea, the region where the deadliest 2014 to 2016 West Africa Ebola outbreak originated. According to Georges Gizerbo, head of office, in Guinea of the World Health Organization, there is currently no known secondary cases, and the 155 people who are contacts of the infected man who passed away are all under observation. Dr. Kizerbo also explained that the strategy against the Marburg disease would be similar to that of Ebola, but only supportive care will be provided as there is no vaccine or medicine directed to the virus. Meanwhile, according to Machidiso Rebecca Moweri, 
WHO's Regional Director for Africa, they are working closely with the health authorities in response to managing and stopping the spread of the disease. Marielle? Marvi, how does the Marburg disease spread and what are the symptoms of this illness? Marielle, the illness is closely related to Ebola and according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or CDC, it is thought to be transferred to humans from fruit bats and it spreads through blood and other bodily fluids. Fever, chills, headache, abdominal pain, nausea, and bleeding are some of the symptoms which appear after an incubation period of 5 to 10 days. Back to you, Marielle. All right, Marvi Delfin, thank you for that live report. Fires continue to blaze through the forests of northern Algeria. Thick clouds of smoke were seen as wildfires spread through livelihood of many residents. Maeve and Dog will give us the details live. Yes, Maeve, please go ahead. Marielle residents escaped to hotels and university residences as their houses burned, with dense smoke obstructing the visibility of fire services. Some have desperately attempted to extinguish the fires by hurling water from plastic containers and by using tree branches to smother the flames. Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman spoke on state television on Tuesday, stating that the government is in talks with the international community to hire planes to help speed up extinguishing the fires. According to Interior Minister Campbell Beljud, only arsonists could have ignited the simultaneous outbreak of the fires across several localities. Firefighters and soldiers are still containing the wildfires. Beljud also promised compensation to those who have been affected by the disaster. Marielle? May you mentioned that Algeria's Interior Minister claimed that arsonists could be the reason behind this. Uh, can you... Uh, give us further details. Marielle, Interior Minister Boju did not provide any more details on these allegations, and no arrests were announced so far. But climate scientist Marielle also stated that there is little doubt that extreme events such as heat waves and wildfires like this are driven by climate change. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Mavian Dog, for that live report. Amazon has unveiled a new return policy and refunds to eligible customers starting September 1, 2021. Ia Devera tells us the details live. Yes, Ia, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. Amazon will pay customers up to $1,000 for defective products sold on its marketplace by third-party merchants that cause property damage or personal injury. It might also cover claims above $1,000 if the third-party seller is unresponsive or rejects a claim believed to be valid. This comes after the, the e-commerce giant, e giant faces lawsuits in which it has argued that it bears no responsibility for those claims. Consequentially, the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission filed a case against Amazon on July, as they did not meet quality specification surrounding certain items like baby sleepwear, carbon monoxide detectors, and hair dryers, all claimed to have endangered the consumers. The new policy is contrary to Amazon's previously recognized legal responsibilities over third-party supplied items. Marielle? Thank you, Ia Devera, reporting live. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And just in a fire which was reportedly caused by a gas explosion hit an area in Bonifacio Global City in Taguig tonight. The first alarm was declared at 7.30 p.m. Firefighters have responded to the scene. And before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path.
And those are the reasons behind the news August 11, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.